All right, let the show begin. Said Lama, take it away. Thank you, Matt. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session, Bluebeam Review for Civil Engineers. Uh, my name is Said Lama. I'm the Industry Account Manager for Solicat for Civil Market, and uh, today with me is uh, Matt Colbert, the King, Technology Consultant for the Civil Market as well. So today, Matt will show us how Bluebeam uses universally accessible PDFs to streamline markups, estimation, and collaboration on civil projects. We're gonna show you the essentials and how to collaborate on files real time using Bluebeam Studio, which is built in into review. Also, letting you guys know that we're gonna be recording this and uh, we'll make this available for everyone uh, in our YouTube channel. Uh, so I'm gonna be posting the direct link to our channel, so please subscribe. And uh, there's a lot of uh, nice videos that we've been posting recently, so have fun. Okay, let's start with the agenda for today. Uh, we're gonna be talking about review versions and licensing model. Uh, then we're gonna uh, show some tips for creating PDFs. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about customizing the review interface. Then Matt, will, the Matt is, show, is gonna show us how we can compare PDF standardize your, your uh, tool sets, estimation and file security. And we're gonna end with the collaboration model and Q&A. First, uh, a little bit of what we do at SolidCAD. Uh, in addition to provide licenses, we, we, are, we have a very decent menu of uh, consulting services like uh, training, customization, data management, scan to beam uh, workflow assessments and many others, uh, as you can see. In addition to Bluebeam, uh, we're also planning on partners of Autodesk, CTC tools, which are productivity tools for Civil 3D and Rabbit, and also say software with the FME solution, which is a data integration platform that can help you connect system, transform data, and automat automatize uh, workflows. Also, uh, some of the bundles that we created uh, for during this COVID uh, pandemic, uh, these are remote services that we can provide. First, the Bluebeam bundles. If you're looking to implement Bluebeam into your workflow, train your staff and, and encourage collaboration, these are the, the bundles that you'll be looking into. Um, in addition to that, uh, due to COVID-19, Bluebeam has extended on, uh, their trial period to nine days. So this is a great moment to try review. I, I'll be also be sharing the uh, trial link in the chat section in a bit. Second, we have our, our go live with BIM 360. BIM 360 is basically is a cloud-based data management solution, and it will, it will let you connect project teams with uh, centralized project data in, in real time. It also allows collaboration with uh, Revit, Civil 3D, AutoCAD, and Plan3D. Finally, our Accelerate to BIM, which is a bundle of, of services that to embrace the functionality of Civil 3D. So it's a combination of training and professional service to help you become BIM ready. Our upcoming events. So next week, we're gonna be back with our Civil 3D best practices. We're gonna be talking about uh, grading on May 12th. And we're going to be talking also about styles and template creation on May 19. Uh, I'll be posting another link where you can register for the, all these events uh, in the chat section. Then we're going to have our productivity tools for Civil 3D. Uh, first one is in May 20th. We're going to talk about production tools. June 10th, we're going to have uh, interest sessions about productivity tools for CAD managers. And in July, uh, we're gonna have something specific for the surveyor industry. So it's productivity tools for surveyors, July 7th. Finally, our classic courses now being delivered remote, our Civil 3D for transportation, infrared fundamentals, and our classic Civil 3D fundamentals. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Matt, who's gonna start the show. Matt, welcome. Thank you, Saeed. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to share my camera just briefly. 
I don't want to subject you to my face for the entire thing. Oh, you're you're a person. I thought you were a robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes. <laughs> Let's see. I got to make myself a presenter here. All right, there we go. Uh, welcome. My name is Matt Kohlberg, as I had uh, suggested. So just a bit about me before we jump into this. Uh, I've been in the civil industry since 1993, uh, doing consulting, land development, highways, land use planning. About three years ago or so, SolidCAD decided to get into the Bluebeam game. And so we sort of, I, I really, I really sort of bought into the software, you know, I, I used Adobe before that, but uh, I bought into the software and I appreciate what it does and, and uh, I really quite like it now. And so uh, we created some courseware and I've done lots of courses with the software. And, and today, what are my goal is just sort of to give you an idea of, of sort of what it does and really what sets it apart uh, from other software such as Adobe. So that's it for my camera. There you go. Um, first thing, I, I'm going to let you do your own research. Now, I, I do have a web page opened up here. Uh, my, my link here is called Google Search. And so let me open up the page. And this is all I searched for, Bluebeam Review versus Adobe Acrobat. So if, if you're currently using Acrobat and you're, you're wondering what's this Bluebeam thing and, and maybe why I should use it, I encourage you to do your own research. Go into Google and type this in. And the first thing that pops up for me is this one, top five reasons to choose Bluebeam over Acrobat. And so I'm gonna talk about some of those today, but I definitely encourage you to do your own research. Go to the Bluebeam website, install the trial, and sort of just use it. Now, if you'd like my PowerPoint, uh, feel free. In the GoToWebinar panel, there's a handout section. You should be able to see this on my screen right there. Handouts one of five. Uh, there you can download this PowerPoint. Uh, there's nothing really earth shattering in there. It's, it just gives you a bit of information. It's not really a training resource, but if you want it, it's there. If you have questions during the webinar, uh, all attendees are muted. There's too many people to have everybody turn their mics on. So if you'd like to ask a question, please do so in the questions panel. Uh, Saeed will do his best to answer them. Maybe after 20 minutes, we'll have a look and see if there's any questions that uh, that we feel are pertinent, just to regurgitate uh, to the rest of the attendees. Now, just before I get going here, I'm going to start with a polling question. All right, so in a second, you're going to see something pop up on your screen. And the question is, which software do you currently use? And uh, I'll qualify that by saying, to view and mark up PDFs. All right, so take a few seconds and answer this question. It's You can only pick one. So you currently use Bluebeam, you currently use Adobe, or something else, other. All right, 40% of you have voted so far. I'll give you a few more seconds. So far, Bluebeam's in the lead, 53 to 47. Oh. Others coming up, 11% there. Uh, there we go. Okay, that's probably enough time. I'm going to close the poll and I'll share with you the results. There we go. So it's it's pretty close. Bluebeam's just lagging behind Adobe right now. So 55% of the respondents use Adobe and 45 use Bluebeam. Thank you very much. So here's the agenda. Uh, I'm not really going to spend a ton of time on the review editions and licensing. That's for you and then your, your account manager to sort of figure out. Oh, I got to turn off the polling. Oh, Pardon me. Polling. I always forget that. Yes, I know. There we are. Sorry, let's back that up a second. We're good now. Yep, thank you. 
Right, so here's the agenda. Not too much on review additions and licensing. Go over that really briefly. Um, if you're more than curious, then uh, contact your, your SolidCAD sales rep and they'll be able to walk you through the plan that's right for you. Um, some tips and tricks on creating PDFs, how to customize or what customization is and, and why to do it. Tools for comparison, standardization, estimation, and file security. And finally, collaboration with um, Bluebeam Studio. So there's three versions or three editions, that is, I should probably change that wording. Review, uh, Bluebeam calls it editions. So review standard, review CAD, review extreme. I'm not going to go over all the details, um, but that's the order. So if you purchase review CAD, you get review standard plus some other stuff. If you get review extreme, you get review CAD plus some more things. As far as licensing options go, depending on your needs, there's perpetual licensing, there's enterprise, and there's open. Um, if you're an AutoCAD user, uh, which I am, by the way, my, my background is AutoCAD and Civil 3D. I've been using them. I've been using Civil 3D since before I was born, basically, in AutoCAD since line 92, I guess. Uh, if you've been using those products and you're familiar with what a network license is, that's sort of what open licensing is, except the license manager is, well, it, the licenses are managed by Bluebeam on, online in the cloud. Other than that, it's, it's very similar. Enterprise license package is sort of similar to open licensing, but just a little bit different. The, the licenses in open license, um, when you start the software in the morning, it goes online, it says it grabs a license, and then when you shut the software down, whenever you're done, it returns that license to the pool. Enterprise licensing, it's your license. Um, if you're inactive for 15 days, then your license gets sent back. So there's subtle differences. Uh, and then just like a lot of other products, there's annual maintenance, should you choose it, uh, for perpetual, that is. Second chapter here, tips for making your PDFs. Now, I've got a couple of screen captures here. Um, not much to show you in terms of opening software. This is, this is sort of a combination of what you see inside AutoCAD and what you see inside Bluebeam Review. Now, I, I wrote a blog article last week. Um, if you're not familiar, or if you didn't know that we had a blog, that's what you would type into Google. So our blog name is Solid Chat. To get more information about this particular slide, go to Solid Chat and find my blog article, which was published last Friday. It talks about this in detail. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice when you open up a PDF made from AutoCAD is this. Now, not all PDFs made from AutoCAD will show this. Um, only those made using AutoCAD's PDF driver. So here it is. If I'm in AutoCAD and I use the DWG to PDF driver, then I open up this PDF in Bluebeam Review. I'm going to get that warning message down on the bottom. So what, what is it? First of all, I just say yes, always. These things are called untitled viewports, and they will quite honestly mess up your measurements, area, length, that kind of thing. So whenever you see this message, when opening a PDF in review, just say yes. Now you might say, oh, that's, that's no good. I'll just use Adobe then. Well, guess what? These untitled viewports are in that PDF. Bluebeam just recognizes them and it gives you the option to remove them. Adobe actually doesn't. So your measurements in Adobe could be affected by this as well, but there's no, there's no tool in Adobe for, to remove these viewports. So where does the problem lie? Well, it would appear that it's an anomaly caused by the Autodesk driver. So what do you do? Well, as long as you're using review, you're going to get this message, just say yes, and all is, all is well. If you use the Bluebeam driver, by the way, the Bluebeam driver gets installed when you install Bluebeam Review. So even in Notepad, you can make a PDF from Notepad using the Bluebeam driver. Um, inside AutoCAD, you have choices, of course. You can use the Autodesk driver or you can use the Bluebeam driver. It's up to you which one you want. I'll give you a little hint though. When you're using the Bluebeam driver inside AutoCAD, 
I highly recommend to create yourself a PC3 file. If you don't know what a PC3 file, then that probably means you don't use AutoCAD because AutoCAD works with PC3s and it works with uh, system printers as well. But what, what a PC3 is, it's a system printer such as the Bluebeam PDF with some AutoCAD settings in it. This one in particular, uh, I highly recommend, this is your tip of the day. If you're gonna use the Bluebeam driver inside AutoCAD, definitely make yourself a PDF and definitely turn this option on. True type as text. See, it defaults to true type as graphics. What that means is you can't search text in a PDF. So if you wanna be able to search text, definitely turn on the true type as text option inside AutoCAD. All right, that's your tip of the day. Now a little bit more about text. Um, there's a lot of AutoCAD people out there that's, that still use the SHX type fonts for various reasons. We've been using this font forever, why bother changing? Well, there's lots of reasons to change away from the old SHX fonts now. Um, every class I teach in AutoCAD, I don't even talk, well, I do talk about that, I say don't use it. You, know, you should be using true type fonts. Now, I don't care if you use Arial or Times New Roman or Swiss or anything like that, but if the font has a TT in front of it, use it. Why? A couple of reasons to do with AutoCAD and some reasons dealing with PDFs. Um, if you use the AutoCAD SHX fonts and you use the AutoCAD PDF driver, you will not be able to search text. Even with that other setting I showed you in the previous slide, you can't search text when you use SHX fonts unless you use the Bluebeam printer and you have Review CAD or later installed. See this setting on the bottom right that I've circled, that's a setting inside AutoCAD, right? When if you purchase Bluebeam Review Standard, which is the first edition, you don't get this tool. You must purchase Review CAD or Review Extreme to be able to get this AutoCAD plugin. Okay, with the AutoCAD plugin, you can turn in this option, right? The SHX fonts option. With that turned on, then I go ahead and make a print with the Bluebeam driver. I can search text even though it was made from SHX text. So I still recommend to use true type fonts, um, but if you need to use SHX, um, purchase Review CAD or Extreme, uh, and then you get this option to be able to search with uh, SHX text. Again, our blog article, Solid Chat, last Friday, goes into a lot of detail about this. The interface of Bluebeam Extreme is highly customizable. It's called Profiles. So if, you've, if, you, if you're an AutoCAD user, you understand what um, profiles are. Profiles in AutoCAD are different from profiles in Review. A profile in Review is more like the customizable user interface or, or the, the workspaces inside AutoCAD if you're an AutoCAD user. So what a profile does, if you're not if you're not familiar with AutoCAD workspaces, is it's you can adjust your interface. So looking at these three images, this first image here, that's review out of the box. That's what it looks like. We see a bunch of panels on the left. We see some toolbars on the right. We see a properties sort of panel right there. This one. I've turned off some of the panels on the left. And this one, most everything is turned off except for only two panels. The review comes with a lot of tools. If maybe you're a power user, you use all the tools, well then you wanna have access to all the tools. But if your job is to do it, a certain number of things, two or three things, really? Why show all the other tools? Why make it harder for yourself? So being able to 
affect the display of the interface elements um, can be very helpful to your day. It can be make you more efficient. You don't have to wade through all the other tools. Okay, so one thing that stands this software, Bluebeam Review, uh, aside from something like Adobe Acrobat, is the ability to customize your user interface. Uh, and that's managed with profiles. All right, chapter four. This and chapter five are sort of the meat and potatoes of this software. This is really what sets this software apart from Adobe and, and other packages. I'm gonna go through just a handful of tools, but understand there's a lot more. Um, by the way, with this software, when when we help a customer implement this software, it's it's several steps. Number one, we discuss how you currently mark drawings up. So if you're a, a red pen and paper type of company, and which a lot of them are still, and you're deciding, well, maybe we should go and, and mark things up digitally using PDFs, our job is to make you successful. We need to make sure you, you get the right edition of the software. Is it standard okay? Is it CAD? Is it extreme? Then we have to figure out your current workflow. You know, where where do these files come from that you're going to mark up? And then how do you mark them up? How many different people at your organization mark up the same set of drawings? So we essentially do a discovery or an assessment of your current workflow. And then we talk about where you want to go. How do you, what's your ultimate goal with this software? And then a lot of customers don't really know what their goal is. They, they know they want to use some kind of software to digitize their markups. And so another part of our job is to figure out where you want to go with this software. So we've assessed where you are. We assess where you want to be. Then we have to figure out how to get you from A to B. And that's usually installation and training and follow-up support. So just quickly, a couple of tools. Now, I'm going to get into the software here. No more PowerPoint. Well, I will eventually. So here we've got four different PDFs open. One thing I want to show you is the overlay tool. All right, let's go to overlay pages. Which ones do I want? Those two. I'm going to set my colors appropriately. You'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, overlay one is going to be red. Overlay two is going to be blue. So I'll hit the button. So essentially, imagine if you had two paper drawings with really, really thin paper that you could see through. That's what this tool is for. I picked red and blue for a reason. What well, if you mix red and blue, what do you get? Purple, right? Whenever you see something that's purple, that's where the objects are identical. Wherever you see something that's blue, it's an object that exists in one of your drawings, in my case, overlay two. If there's something in red, it shows up as red. Why would you use some, uh, something like this? Well, um, yes, I know this is not a civil engineering drawing, it's an architectural drawing, but you know, imagine you had two civil drawings open. One roads, one storm sewer, one sanitary sewer, even one water main. You don't have to overlay just two files. You can overlay as many files as you need and specify different colors. So maybe your job is to check to make sure all of the pipes don't overlap each other. Don't um, There's no problems with the pipe interference. And so you overlay a bunch of drawings just to make sure that the pipes are in where they're supposed to be. Two meter offset between, let's say, sanitary and the water main, or one meter between storm and sand. It's up to you. Um, an architectural gentleman gave me a good idea last week when I was doing a training class. A multi-story building with some um, pipes that penetrate through the floors. So floor one, there's a pipe that goes up. Floor two, there's a pipe that comes from floor one. So overlaying those two drawings, making sure that the, um, the holes that are cut in the floor are exactly the same place with floor one and floor two. So that's where this tool can be used. Um, one, one problem with this tool is it's difficult to see something that's really, really small. Right, there's a very small difference right here in time. If I didn't know it was there, I probably wouldn't have seen it. 
So now we're talking about file comparison. I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to use a different tool. All right, I'm going to compare overlay one with overlay two. This tool is a little bit different. You can only compare two files. But what we get is something that looks a little bit different. Right, this time, it very obviously highlights what's different with Revision Cloud. A little more visible than the other thing. What, when, would, when might you use this tool? Well, you could use this tool. You've got Revision 1 versus Revision 2. They might be months, weeks, or months apart. I mean, what's different between Revision 1 and Revision 2? That's where you can use this tool. But still, really small differences may not be visible like this the bottom left it's more visible than it used to be but it's you know it's conceivable that I could maybe miss that one that's where the markups list comes in handy see so Adobe doesn't have the exact equivalent of this markups list everything that the software determines that is different is listed in this markups list and so what we can do with it I'm going to zoom in here. When I click a different markup, it's going to zoom me right to that markup. It's going to highlight it for me. So not only are the differences very obviously highlighted, but every single difference is listed here in the markups list. And so if it's my job, maybe I'm the drafter, and the engineer marked this PDF up for me. So on one screen, I've got Bluebeam Review. On the other screen, I have AutoCAD. And so when I'm ready, and by the way, maybe multiple engineers marked up the same file. Now, this one, it's just me. I'm the author. But maybe um, Sarah down the hall was the lead engineer, or maybe Tom was the secondary engineer, and, and they both marked it up. And I can see who marked it up, and I can see when they marked it up. So if I have a question, I know exactly who to go to. So I address the engineer's markup here. And then me as the drafter, I just come here and say, set the status as completed. So it's important for someone who's addressing the markups to be able to change the status to manage, to, to more easily see you know, what, what they've addressed. After I've finished addressing all these, nothing left in the status column, I know I'm finished. So the markups list isn't just limited even to a markup that someone's given me. Maybe I have a secondary question for the engineer. All right. I'm not going to talk about all the different markup tools. There are lots. Uh, the probably the one of the most common is just the callout, right? What a callout is is an arrowhead with some text in it. Maybe I'm the drafter and I say, well, I can't understand this markup. That's my question to the engineer, let's say. And so when I send that back, they're going to see all their markups addressed, but then they're going to see my own markup. Then they'll address that, and then they can set the status. So the markups list is, in my opinion, very important. It's a very excellent tool for tracking your markups. You know, it's it's one thing to be able to draw something on a PDF, and that, that's great. But to be able to manage those markups um, is even more important. I'm going to go one step further. I can now summarize. Right, I'm going to create a real quick PDF summary here. Let's see. There we go. Uh, let's talk about this from another angle. Maybe you're the engineer on site to do an inspection of the subdivision um, construction. And one day you notice deficiency with storm sewer or water main. Another day you notice a deficiency in something else, maybe something to do with the silt fence for grading, for example. And your markups need to be addressed to certain individuals or certain groups. And what you can do is you can create a custom column. I'm going to do this real quick here. Uh, call it group. 
I'm going to make a choice. Add two. Water is one. Storm is the other. I can have as many of these as I wish. All right, I have a brand new column, which I'll drag over. And so if any one of these markups is destined for a particular group or a particular user, I set that markup for that user. All right, and then when we go to do the summary, as long as I sort by the appropriate column, in this case, group, if I sort by group and then do the summary, what's going to happen is the software is going to give me this brand new page at the end of this document that is summarized by however I want it to be summarized. It's important that I sort by the appropriate column first before I run the summary. All right, here it is. Now, I didn't really set very many groups, but it's sorted by user now or by group. So water, if there were more markups with the water as the selected group, they would be sorted like this. And then what you can do is you can split this up, send all the water markups to the water person, send all the storm markups to the storm person. That's what the markups list gives us. And that's what Adobe products don't really have. So if you're trying to decide whether or not to use Bluebeam or Adobe, um, this one and what I'm about to talk about next is, is, is definitely high up on the list. Next up, comparison tools. I'm not going to demonstrate this one for, for time purposes, but estimators. You have to do all sorts of things. You need to calculate areas for, let's say, grasscrete installation or just sod insulation or even asphalt. And then you have to count things. Yes, I know it's not a civil drawing. Um, I'm counting toilets here, but maybe you have to count catch basins or store manholes or you have to count linear meters of water main. We have to do estimation. So that's another part where the software sort of shines is the ability to count and with the markups list to assign the markup to a particular group. Now this one's pretty cool. See maybe there's 75 different toilets or, or 42 different catch basins in your subdivision. It takes time for you as a estimator to go through and put the check mark beside everyone. This is called a visual search. Right? What it does is you put it, pick a rectangle around what it is you want to count and then let the software do it. So in this circumstance, it found seven. And I didn't even have to count them myself. The software automatically put the check mark beside those things that I suggested that I count. Um, now, you do have to do your due diligence and make sure that it's correct. You can't just trust it, at least, you know, every time I've done it, it's it's been pretty correct, but uh, there are some settings. And so if you adjust the settings in a certain way, maybe it doesn't count seven, it counts six. So you do have to do your due diligence. We are engineers after all. Talked about the markups list. Um, in chapter five, we're going to talk about collaboration. That's actually what happened here, where we have different people collaborating on the same PDF. Um, here's another example of a custom column I made. I called it responsibility. And so Sandy gets this one, Debbie gets this one, and so on. Custom columns. You can even use a custom column to count. Um, or price different objects. So if, if you're counting catch basins and you determine, okay, each catch basin costs, you know, 40, 49.99, whatever the price of a catch basin is, and you count 15 of them, the software can have a, a formula in a custom column to do the actual costing for you as well. Uh, and something I'm not, I don't have a slide here, you can link that measurement 
to your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and maintain a dynamic relationship between your PDF and Excel. So I can't demonstrate that today, but that is a feature. All right, let's talk about standardization for a moment. And before I do, I've got one more poll. So the question you're about to see is, how do you feel about standardizing markups? Okay, I'm gonna launch the poll. There it is. How do you feel about standardizing markup tools? Here's the story. Do you think it's a good idea for multiple people in the same company to standardize on how your markups look? Or are you free spirit, you wanna do your own thing? Here's another example. Um, your PDF goes through a city. You know, Zoning has to look at it. Um, architects have to look at it. Civil engineers have to look at it. It's gonna go through the hands of a bunch of different people. When you get that PDF back, would it help if your zoning is red and uh, architects is green and civil engineering is, let's say, blue? Would it help for that to happen? Well, guess what? That's standardization. So, not surprisingly, looking at the results, the vast majority are selecting that standardization is a good idea. I, I threw this in knowing what the answer would be, but I just want everyone to start thinking about it. So I'll close the poll, I'll show you the results, not surprisingly. And there we are. Uh, there's a few free spirits out there, that's okay. All right, if you're a small shop and you're doing your own thing, um, that's fine too. But if you're a bigger shop and you want everybody's markups to have the same look and feel, standardization's a good thing. So I'll hide that poll, and here we are. So in my slide here, we have this group is red, this group is blue, this group is yellow. And that corresponds to the Bluebeam Review tool chest, right? Architects is red, contractors is yellow, engineers are blue. You, you don't have to use those colors, you can use your own colors. Fact is, we can customize this tool chest. You can create your own custom tool chest. You're not limited to one tool set. Each one of these things, it's called a tool set. Inside a tool set are a bunch of different markup tools. You could have area measurement tools in there, length measurement tools, or just call out tools. It's up to you how you want to organize these. And so if you look, these are all sort of, there's a theme, right? These tools are red themed and these tools are yellow themed and these tools are blue themed. Let's take a look at the markup list. Sorry, the, um, the tool chest, shall we? Here's the tool chest that you just saw. The software comes with quite a few of them. And if they work for you, fantastic. But feel free to make your own because it's super easy. Um, here's what I mean. Let's go through this super quick. How's our time? Good, we've got lots of time. Let's say I want to do a call out. Oops, that's not the right button. That's a call out. I type something in and I decide, well, I don't like the look of that. Maybe I want it to be blue. I want the text to be blue. Or maybe I want a box around it. All right. So that's great. But then guess what? The next time you use the same call out, it's red again. So every time you make that, you have to redo the display properties, blue, box, different font even. Well, I don't want to do that, I'm lazy. Uh, I shouldn't say I'm lazy. I, I like to be the most efficient I can. So I get one of these callouts or whatever markup I want to a state that I'm happy with and then I just right click it and I, I'm gonna to choose to add it to my tools. There. So instead of using tools markups to create a markup, I now go to my tool set. That's the tool I just used. I'm going to change its properties a little bit. There we go. There. That's how you standardize. If I'm the contractor, I use the contractor tool. Now, this one happens to be something called the Cloud Plus. Cloud Plus is a revision cloud and a markup in one. It's all one big object. Of course, every time you make a markup, all the markups will definitely show up here in the markups list, as we talked about earlier. So the point of this exercise is, if you want the same look and feel, 
you're going to need to create some tool chests. It's it's really quite easy. It's not hard to create tool chests, and that's one of the things. You know, when when we help our customers implement the software, this is one of the things that we do. You know, I'm going to create 10 or 20 different things for you. I'm going to teach you how to do it yourself, and so you can finish. All right, our job is to give you a little bit of content and teach you how to make the content because it's really not that hard. It's your job to take what we've taught you and finalize your internal tool chest. Um, a little bit of word about how to share this amongst your team members. There's a couple ways to do it. I can take my custom tool chest and I can export and then my colleague down the hall can then import and that's okay but it makes a copy of my stuff on their machine. Better if I create my tool chest on the server and then get all of my teammates to not import but to add from the server, now we're working with a shared set of tools. If I make a change on Tuesday, and when they come back in the office on Wednesday, they'll see that change without having to do anything. So the tool chest is a great idea. You should be using it if you're using this software, but there's ways to use it even that make it even more efficient. So if you're in a multi-user team, highly recommended to share it on your server. Um, a few words about security. A lot of my customers sort of get these two things mixed up. So security, at least when you talk it, when talk about it from the Bluebeam review perspective, security is about a single file. When we send somebody our PDF, do we want to allow them to print it or change it or mess with the pages? extract content to be able to paste somewhere else? Do we want them to be able to add their own markups or filling in forms? So <clears throat> by default, your PDFs allow all these things, but they don't have to. For example, if I send you a PDF and I don't even want you to print it, I'm gonna disallow printing um, or even opening this, the, the file. I can apply a password to the file so you can't open it unless you have the password. That's how Bluebeam thinks of security. Um, digital signatures, yeah, it's another form of security as well. Now, you might think of a digital signature as you scribbling out your name, sort of like the way I have. If that's all you use, well, that's not really a digital signature. That's your digital, that's, <laughs> I'm going to say digital signature. Okay, it's, it's your scanned physical signature. It's different from a digital signature. A digital signature is a official, in air quotes, by the way, digital signature is, is an, an official signature on a file. It's, you sign a file. Yes, my signature is there, but that's only part of it. That, that doesn't even have to be there. The file could be signed without it. And so why would we want to use digital signatures? Okay, maybe, maybe you're the engineer of record. You're the last person to look at this before it goes to the contractor. And so normally you take out your red pen and sign every single page. Uh, you can still do that with your scanned signature, but the digital signature signs the file. You'll notice right here it says signature is valid. So you as the engineer digitally sign a file. It's a valid signature. The unscrupulous contractor says, nah, I don't want to build it like this. So they'll take the PDF and they'll mess with it. They'll change something. They'll change a number even. Then it gets built then something happens. And you're like, well, you know, my PDF doesn't say that that's the elevation, and but the contractor says, well, mine does, and it goes to court. Your PDF is going to have this valid signature. Theirs won't. See, when they make an edit to the PDF, that signature becomes invalidated. So if it happens to go to court, you bring your PDF, they bring theirs, the judge is gonna say, hey, the contractor, you have an invalid signature where the engineer is, is valid, well, guess who's going to win, right? That is what it means to digitally sign a PDF. Lastly, collaboration online. Uh, Bluebeam has an online presence called Bluebeam Studio. There's two things. There's Studio Projects, 
which is the ability to store files online, essentially. Uh, and then there's something called Bluebeam Studio Sessions. Right? This is the ability to place a PDF in the cloud and collaboratively mark up that PDF. So I've got my Bluebeam account. I've just logged in. Um, I can create a new session with this button and I can invite people to a session and I can attach one or more PDFs to a session. So let me go back to my slide. So here's the interface. There's my session. I've called it Bluebeam Demo. Um, I've got my work email address and my home email address. I've invited myself essentially. I've attached one document to the session. And so the deal is we can both open that same document simultaneously and mark it up simultaneously. That you can't do without this software, right? Normally, a plan set, a paper plan set of drawings has to go to engineer one first. Engineer one marks it up. Then it goes on to engineer two, and then it goes on to engineer three. So you got this waiting period. You got to wait before your prior engineers mark up a paper set of files. And, and that's the same with PDFs, right? In the normal world, one person can mark up a PDF at one time. So it's a digital workflow. You're not marking up paper anymore, but you still have the waiting period. You have to wait for your previous engineers to mark up before it's your turn. But with the studio sessions, you can upload your PDF to the cloud in the Bluebeam Studio. And it, you don't even have to mark it up simultaneously because it's just up there on the cloud. If engineer one happens to be working on it at 10 o'clock this morning and I happen to want to work on it at 10 o'clock, fantastic. Now we're both marking it up simultaneously. It doesn't have to be that way. Maybe they're done. I happen to go at two o'clock and mark it up and nobody's currently marking it up then. That's a perfectly normal thing to do. So Studio Sessions is a way to upload your PDF to the cloud and you're all marking up the same PDF possibly simultaneously. See, one thing we don't want to have is you don't want to be emailing PDFs around. I don't want several copies of it. We want a single source of truth. We all want to mark up the same PDF. So if you email the PDF around, well, now you have multiple sources of truth. Now, which one is the current one? Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe engineer one marks up his PDF, engineer two marks up their PDF, engineer three marks up her PDF. We can combine all those markups into one PDF after, and that's okay. But maybe it's a better idea not to do that. Maybe it's a better idea to just upload it to the studio session and just mark up the same PDF. Could be simultaneously, could be consecutively. It's up to you. But that's what Studio Sessions is for. This is the markups list from a recent Studio Session that I did. Right? Dan did that markup, Usha, Yang, Rita, we all marked it up simultaneously. Uh, at, and it's a single source of truth. Now, when the Studio Session is complete, whoever created the session is the master, let's call them. Um, they'll finish the session, the file gets downloaded on their machine, they can create that summary like I showed you before, and also a summary of the session as well. Now, who said what and when? That is essentially your overview of Bluebeam Review. You know, it's one hour. There is, uh, there's a lot more that we could show. I really wanted to show you what sets the software apart from Adobe products and sort of give you some information on how you could use this software, right? It's, you can use it internally as a consultant. You can use it internally as a city. I saw some municipalities in our uh, attendee list, right? So, yes, Matt. Uh, Said. Uh, yeah, I would like to add something. It's just like, you know, we work with a lot of government authorities and, uh, 
it's uh, they're implementing Bluebeam for the resign the design review process and also to go paperless. It's just I mean it, it justify a, a price fund uh, to make the switch. So digitizing workflows helps save a lot of money on printing and shipping costs, and uh, it's also packed with all this uh, document security and digital signatures. So it's a perfect fit for any kind of uh, government agency. Good, I agree. Yeah, we've worked with a few uh, lately too, right? Yes, recently a lot of implementations. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's an amazing product. I mean, and it works, so it's, it's proven. Agreed. Are there any questions in the questions panel that uh, that we should talk about, or? Yeah, think? we have one question. Uh, it's uh, when we when you were talking about the driver, the PDF driver. If you, if you can go back to that slide. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, so we have a question. Uh, you know the message about uh, the error message that you get? Uh, the viewports? The lower, yeah, the Bluebeam Review X64, yes. But we have a question from Jason. He's asking if, should we select do not show this message again in this case? Oh, that's up to you. Um, the problem with do not show this message is which which option is it going to pick for you? Um, for me, I, I don't click that. You know, when a document contains these untitled viewports, I definitely want to make sure that I hit that yes button. And I'm afraid if I say do not show the message again, it's not actually going to show me that there are in fact untitled viewports. I, I definitely want to make sure that I click that yes. Now, if you do that, it's not really that big a deal. Because let me show you. I think I have recent, recent, recent. Where is it? SHX. There it is. Um, I'm going to open this file. Okay, I'm going to click no. And imagine I didn't check this. So I didn't have the option to get rid of those things. Uh, I can get rid of them later. Even if I clicked no, right, in the measurement panel here, there's that untitled viewport that I need to get rid of, I can just delete it here. So feel free to check that button if you don't want to be prompted. But me, I, I prefer to um, to have that message show up. That's how I like to work, but it's up to you. Thank you, Mike. Right. Good question, my pleasure. Okay, uh, that's, uh, we have another question. Uh, we have uh, Deepak asking, how to select multiple lines or multiple objects created by use on the other page on other file? So, uh, I'm going to have to read that one again. Sorry, what was that? Oh, yeah, we have a more detailed question. Yeah, he's, just, uh, he's asking how to select multiple lines or multiple objects created uh, to use another page on another file. Oh, okay. I, th uh, I, th I think you mean markups. So I'm going to go on that assumption that uh, he wants to select yes. multiple markups. Yeah, okay. he's referring to markups, yeah. All right, so I have two markups here, and maybe I want to copy and paste them from this page to another page. You just hold down the Shift button. I'm holding down Shift, and I, I've, you can see that I've selected both of those markups. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, yep. So the answer is hold down the shift key as you're marking them, or sorry, as you're selecting them, and you can select as many as you want, uh, or you can pick this button down here, the arrow. That will allow me to draw a rectangle around the markups and pick them that way. So a couple different ways to do it. I think uh, that's all in terms of questions. So I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna just just put out the our next our upcoming events and also let everybody know that I pasted all the links that we mentioned today for our YouTube channel, for our event section, for our training calendar, and also for the trial site for Bluebeam. So feel free to uh, take advantage of this uh, opportunity. Uh, let me just. Uh, finish this webinar with that uh, final slide oh, okay i'll share yours i'll make you presenter okay there you are
Next slide. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully you, you learned something today. And if you don't, reach out. We have different uh, offerings for, for you. If you wanna get, you wanna ask more questions, you wanna know how we can, how, we, how Bluebeam will benefit you, please reach out. Uh, these are our contact information, our emails and direct numbers. So if you have for, further questions, sales inquiries, anything, please reach out. All right, we'll, um, we'll leave this slide up for the next couple minutes, but um, uh, yeah, me too. Thank you for attending. Hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. Anything else, Said? That's all for me. Thank you guys. Uh, have a wonderful rest of the day and please stay safe. Uh, we're, we're, we're going through this and it's almost done. So let's, let's keep it going for a little bit more. <laughs> thanks all everybody. Right, thank you everybody.